TV Live. I'm here with Travis. Hello, everyone. We are doing the 200 point Armada Task Force format that was debuted at uh, FFG Worlds earlier this year. This, uh, this game is going to be played on a 3x3 playmat, half the size of a regular Armada game. They will be using all the obstacles. There's no objectives for each player. Instead, both players will be, well, all players in this event will be using the same objective uh, across all games, which is the valuable payload objective you can see in the bottom left corner of the screen. You're still going to choose a first player and a second player based on your bid. And in this case, uh, Philip ended up being the first player for this match. The uh, deployment zone for the rocks is uh, anywhere on the board as long as it's no closer than distance one using the squadron ruler of any player's edge. The deployment zone for each player is going to be distance three from their edge as well as distance three from the sides. And yes, rocks can be deployed in the uh, either player's deployment zone. So it's going to be a lot of rocks in a very tight space, which is going to be an interesting challenge, especially for some of the bigger ships. Now, after the uh, ships have been deployed with both players, what's going to happen is that the second player is going to take two victory tokens. They're not objective tokens. He's going to take two victory tokens. One of those tokens he's going to put um, in the opponent's deployment zone at distance two of their edge. And then he's going to take another victory token, and he's going to put it in his own deployment zone at distance two of his edge. Now, after that happens, both players is going, are going to choose one of their non-flotilla ships to be an objective ship. When an objective ship reveals a command dial, if it is at distance one of a victory token that is in their opponent's deployment zone, they get to pick it up, and at the end of the game, it's going to be worth 50 points. So you can't pick up the victory token that's in your own deployment zone. You have to go all the way over to your opponent's uh, deployment zone and pick it up. So the fact that there is one singular objective means that players can kind of build around it. The really inter interesting thing about this format, uh, at least what I've found when uh, me and a couple of the Toronto players have been testing it, has been, uh, you know, there's definitely builds that that capitalize on trying to get the objective. Like that's a major part of their strategy. And then there's other builds that do a huge bid for first uh, and ignore the objective and instead try to um, either make sure that one of their ships is virtually unkillable and then just kill you know, a flotilla on the opponent's side or um, make one of their ships deadly enough so that it can jump in, kill something of theirs and jump out and uh, secure the victory that way. On the left side, we've got Christian. Christian's died in the wool Imperial player and True to form, he's bringing an Imperial Demolisher list uh, with a Gladiator with Captain Brunson. Captain Brunson is a very good upgrade in this, uh, in this variant. Captain Brunson is an officer that says, when defending, if you are at distance two of an obstacle, you can exhaust her to cancel one of the attacker's attack dice. So she's almost always going to be on, uh, just based on the, de the uh, deployment of the rocks in this game. So with that, the Demolisher title, which is standard on almost every Gladiator, uh, if it's your only Gladiator on your list, Ordnance Experts for that, Consistency on Black Dice, and then Engine Techs. Uh, Christian's going to supplement that with an Architons Light Cru Cruiser with Captain Need and Turbolaser Reroute Circuits. That's going to be his long-range gunship. However, with the uh, close quarters nature of this objective, um, sometimes you can get into a situation where the Architons... Uh, can't help but fly into the middle of a furball and uh, doesn't have the defense tokens to survive that. So Christian's going to have to be very careful when it comes to maneuvering his um, his Architons out of trouble. So Christian is the 2016 Canadian World Champion for Armada. Canadian National Champion? Sorry, Canadian National Champion. Uh, he, he's gone to Worlds, I think, almost every year since 2015 to participate in Armada, and he's he's always placed very high. I think his most recent finish was... Uh, fifth place at on day one of the 2018 Worlds. Uh, just to round off Christian's list, he's got uh, just a generic Decimator and Morna Key. Uh, Decimators, while very expensive for a squadron, they have a, a lot of hull. They have black anti-squadron dice, which are more consistent than blue anti-squadron mm -hmm. dice, of course. And then on top of that, you have someone like Morna Key who can re-roll uh, her attack dice. And while being decent at anti-squadron, they have three blue anti-ship dice, and they don't have bomber, but three blue dice is a lot. Like, 
it's it's comparable to something like a B wing where you can roll three hits and get three damage. Where it's only something really that uh, the kind of damage output that's reserved for uh, Skurgs or B wings. Uh, but very quickly, just to uh, talk about Philip's list quickly. He's got his own Gladiator with Engine Techs, APTs, Demolisher, Captain Brunson. Uh, he's supplementing that with a Raider 1 with Agent Callus. One of the things about this format is that a lot of lists tend to skew either, either Super Squadron Heavy or Zero Squadrons. Right. And it looks like Phillip's trying to hedge against the, uh, the Squadron Heavy list with Agent Callus. Because what Agent Callus does is that uh, when the ship that he's on is attacking a squadron, it gets to roll one extra die of uh, the color of the player's choice. Now, I don't think it's going... Uh, sorry, it has to be a unique squadron, so it can't be a generic squadron. So not, it's not going to be all that useful in this game, uh, unfortunately. But uh, Philip does have three activations to Christian's two. In addition to that, uh, Philip is also the first player, so uh, he's going to be able to uh, get an extreme positional advantage with his gladiator. And I think what he's going to try to do is maybe... Uh, ignore the objective token for now, seeing as how Christian has kind of offered up his his Architons uh, in front of Philip's Philip's line. I would imagine that his strategy would be to just dive the Architons, kill it, right, and then uh, try to avoid Christian's uh, Gladiator. And I don't know. I can't tell which uh, which ship. Christian and Philip chose for their objective ships. I'm going to assume Philip chose the Gladiator for his objective ship, and then uh, Christian chose his Gladiator as well. But so. uh, just a note: uh, the Tie Phantoms there are actually they're actually interceptors. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so Philip doesn't oh, actually so. he doesn't actually own any interceptor models because anyone who plays Armada knows that uh, it's almost impossible to find uh, Imperial, Imperial and one. Rebel Squadron one packs these days. Yeah, so since he never got a hold of one of those, he's using some alternate models here. Just have Christian get moving his gladiator into position. It turns out that uh, the Architons is actually Christian's objective ship. Okay. And we've got, uh, we've got of course, the Demolisher on Philip's side as his objective ship. It's kind of ballsy for the, uh, the Architons to be objective ship. Well, it's, it's strange that they just moved him out so quick. He seems like he's going to be pretty vulnerable here. I want to talk quickly about Philip's squadron choice. Sienna Re and Valen Rudor in a 400 point game is considered to be uh, one of the most point sufficient way for an almost entirely all ship list to delay a superior squadron force. Because Sienna Re's ability is that every time right. anytime anything is attacking her, it's treated as obstructed. So one so anti squadron It looks guy like uh, using Demolisher put two uh, points yep. of damage into the side of the Architons there. Sorry, you're saying about the efficient yeah. use of those points. So, uh, so Sienna Re is hard to kill, and Valen Rudor's ability is that if uh, Valen Rudor, if um, a squadron is engaged with both Valen Rudor and another squadron, uh, that squadron cannot attack Valen. So right. you're forced to attack Sienna, who's harder to kill. Right. And so, uh, what I think what Philip's objective with his squadrons is that with the smaller uh, squadron pool for most lists. Uh, you can delay an opponent's force probably for the entire game. Um, decimators are actually pretty vulnerable to Imperial Scatter Aces because of their black die anti-squadron mm -hmm. ability. And uh, that means that they can't generate any accuracies to lock down scatters. So we're in the squadron phase now. Philip uh, is being, he's, he's He's trying to, I would imagine he's trying to keep his uh, fighters not only away from the Architon's flak, uh, and also maybe just out of range of the Decimators who only go at speed 3. He also wants to kind of keep them close to his Raider because yeah. the Raider is his flak boat. Well, I suspect he's going to use the uh, uh, squadron from the Gazanti next turn, so wants them in range. One thing I just realized what Christian might be t trying to do is he might be trying to lure Philip's uh, gladiator into a trap. So if the gladiator pounces on the Architons now, it could 
um, set up an attack by Christian's gladiator. Now, the thing about gladiators, especially with Brunson, is that one gladiator attack is not going to be enough to kill another gladiator. Right. Especially if it's token up the way it is. If I were Christian, I would just focus on the Raider and the Gazanti and ignore the Philip's gladiator. But that's not going to be easy because Philip has first player. Well, yeah, I think it's whatever Philip kind of puts puts out here is going to be Christian's choice. So at the start of turn two, Philip says that he's going to activate his Gazanti as uh, Gazanti is doing a squadron command. Of course, he kept his two squadrons close enough to activate them. I mean, it's interesting here. If not uh, activating one of those other two ships, he's going to be able to get his Architons out of the way of any serious fire for this round. Yeah. So it looks like what Philip's doing is that he's just going to be using the two TIE Fighters, well, the TIE Fighter and the TIE Interceptor for bombing duty. The, uh, the reason for that is he doesn't necessarily want to engage the enemy, yeah, the enemy decimators because they're hiding in a station. He might as well try to uh, start chipping away at the shields on that Architon so that uh, if the, when the Demolisher does engage the Architons, it'll be right. a lot easier for him to kill it. And I mean, if Kristen does decide to bring them out from, and engaging those ties, makes them vulnerable to the, uh, the ship fire from either the Raider or uh, the Demolisher. Although I guess they can engage and still remain uh, out of range. Now, the other thing Philip is probably doing to the Gazanti here is that he might actually be using it to block the Architons from easily reaching uh, the objective token on Philip's deployment zone. Now, unfortunately, I think uh, after moving, Philip was afraid of that Gazanti getting double arc. Doesn't look like it's double arced, but it is in the side arc of that Architons. However, three dice, even with their turbo, uh, turbo laser reroute circuits, it's not going to be enough to kill a Gazanti at long range. So this is a concentrate fire command from the Architons. The Christian, of course, he's going to use it this turn. The Raider only has two uh, evades and one brace. So if he does get an accuracy token, he can lock down... Uh, Christian can lock down the brace. And... Even through, the, uh, even through the evade token, he can do a lot of damage to the raider. Because the thing about the raider is that, yes, it has a brace, but uh, it doesn't have a redirect. And even though it has two shields on each side of its small base, because it doesn't have a redirect, it has to rely on engineering commands to move the shields around. Right. So it's possible for uh, a ship to concentrate on only one side of the raider and drill through the shields into the hull without touching any of the shields yep. on the other side. It's... Um, it's not that uh, uncommon for a raider to die with six shields on three of its hull and zero on one side. So he's not going to go for that. He's going to go for the demolisher, I believe. This is his three dice attack. He's going to add a red die for a concentrate fire command. So, so is that three crits? Yeah. So it was a blank, but he's going to spend the, uh, the evade token to get a turbo laser reroute circuit. So five damage, but... Yeah. Brenson to cancel the double hit. Evade, and then he's probably going to brace to brace down to one. Now, the thing is, I would, I would have been wary about doing that because he's just used a bunch of his defense tokens right. on that attack, including Brunson. Which is fine if that was the only attack he was going to take, but uh, Christian hasn't activated his Demolisher yet. If Philip's smart, he he would wait until the very until uh, I expect the very last plans, activation yeah. to do it to activate his uh, his demo. But I mean that that still will expose uh, the raider to mm -hmm. more fire from that demolisher. So that's a speed three move with the Architons. Uh puts it on a direct straight line towards that objective token. Uh, Philip has one more opportunity next turn to move that Gazanti before the Architons moves so in an attempt to block it. I, I just I, I think the Architons can just go over it. I'm not sure that you can really get in a place that you can prevent it from speeding that through. That would depend on if uh, Christian put in a Navigate command next turn. Because Architons are very... Um, uh, they're not very maneuverable. No. Yeah, they only have a double tick on their last joint. And at speed three, they got to go two straight oh, first yeah, before moving any turns. Oh, I'm sorry. For a second, I thought he was looking at... Uh... 
active monster. So I guess that means he's uh, activating the raider. Yeah. And Philip looks like he's he's going to try to intercept the uh, Architons with his raider. Uh, the raider is a much better uh, thing to activate first. So Philip's raider is at speed two currently, but because he had a navigate command as well as a token, he can uh, he can jump up to speed four and get right in the face of that Arkansas. He's gonna spend it. Speed four. Now <laughs> raiders are ext are probably they they are the most maneuverable ship in the game at speed two. Sure. But kind of like Arkansas, they. Uh, or sort of, or maybe I guess like a, a car with uh, bad steering. Mm -hmm. The faster it goes, the harder it is to turn it. Yeah. Uh, and the only reason he was able to make such a tight turn was because he had the nav command as well as the token. But now he's got to deal with the Speed 4 Raider. I mean, the hope here is that he just kills it. But uh, now the other problem is that he's just put himself right in the bullseye for uh, Christian's Demolisher. So the... So Christian's Demolisher right now, what it's probably going to do is it's going to activate. It's going to get a long-range attack, yep. well, medium-range attack with two red dice. And then it's going to try to, to skirt towards, to try to angle towards um, its side to yep. get a side arc attack as well. Uh, one option that Christian does have is, uh, because he has engine techs, he has the opportunity to also Double do it. Yeah. Well, yeah. He can do a ram. And that's actually what Christian's talking about right now at the table. He's saying that, well, because I have uh, engine techs, I can double ram you, and I can APT you if I roll a crit. Right. And that should be enough to kill you. Well, not enough to kill you, but if he rolls like uh, structural damage, that'd be enough to kill you. So first shot, a crit and a hit. Yeah. So hit crit, at medium range, a evade token. He's going to get him to re-roll it. Nice. So yeah, he'll have to take it. I'll put him down to one shield on that side. Now, which way is Christian going to turn here as he approaches? I feel like he's going to have to turn away to get that side arc. Maybe he can turn enough. Well, yeah, he would have to. If he's turning that way, the danger is that the uh, shield dial will overlap the ship. And then he won't. He'll have to walk it back instead of going. Uh, and then if he, if he does ram, uh, because he was going straight on joint two he may not have the side arc. So yeah, he might have to turn yeah. towards Philip's Demolisher if he wants to get a side arc attack. He's just asking himself, is this enough to put him in my side arc? It looks like I think it may be. Yeah, he's committing to it. So he was at speed two with the nav command. He is going to go to speed three. So that move is actually just, like technically he's going to the last joint there because he oh, started nice. at yeah, speed yeah, yeah. one. So he, he does do the ram. Now he's gonna he's gonna attack with the side arc of the demolisher, and then most likely if he doesn't kill it with this attack, yeah, I think we're looking at a dead raider uh, here. Yeah, barring some uh, skewed rolls. But that may not be a. I mean, Philip may have been planning for this, right? Because that was not the best roll. No, I don't know but he does have ordnance experts. All right, so that's not bad. That's a little bit better. Yeah, I think that's enough to kill him. Yeah, so it's five damage. He's going to brace, brace down to three, and he takes an APT. And the crit was structural damage, which was a direct hit, basically. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. He's dead. He's dead. He's just yeah. doing the okay. right thing. Yeah. So now he, a Christian has the uh, option to engine tech here. So that's, yeah, he's, he's engine teching here to put maybe some additional distance between his demo and Philip's demo. But now he, I think he also, what he wants to do is put himself in front of the Gazanti so that the Gazanti may be forced to ram him, and as well as uh, not block the Architons if it's trying to get for that token. I mean, yeah, it may also be about turning back the other way so he can get... What doesn't have to yep. stay in front of uh, the Gladiator more than one turn. Yeah, I don't think Christian's used his Brunson either. Because he, he needs to stay within <clears throat> distance two of the rock. And what Christian's worried about is that if he does does that turn, does the front shield dial of his demo overlap the Gazanti? Right. And I, even though uh, only the Gazanti would be taking the damage here, I don't think he wants to. He wants to turn in more rather than less. 
The other thing he has to be worried about is that if he does ram the Gazanti, if he moves back, there's a possibility that he actually rams the Architons. Right. So if you overlap something, walk it back, and then overlap that thing mm -hmm. instead, you have to walk it back again, and then you're actually over, you, you ram the other thing. So I think he goes with the safest option here and just go straight. Yep. Philip with the uh, swishy command. Philip, known in the Toronto Armada scene for coming up with pet names for the commands. So, so far, we've got the squishy command. We've got the shooty shooty command. Uh, we have the squiggly defense token. Squiggly defense token. <laughs> so, yeah, only inside arc here. So, too far away, I think. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't have... Uh, he didn't have the front arc, so he he wasn't he, able he to would have it. if he hadn't used engine tags. So you're talking about Philip? Well, I'm just saying if Christian hadn't used engine oh, tags yes. there, he would have been in the front arc of yep. the demolisher. This is maybe interesting too. Is he going to land on his squadrons? In which case, he actually lets Christian take some pot shots at him. Yeah, with his squadrons. The, the thing is, he has to be careful, right? Because if he, if he lands on his squadrons. What Christian? What I would do in, in Christian's uh, case is I would actually put them uh, closer to his decimators. Yeah. And then, uh, and then what you would do then is you would just attack Santa Ray twice with your decimators. Mm -hmm. Again, it's it's bad because your first attack is always going to whiff because of the scatter token against right. black dice. But uh, the combination of like. The, yeah, you, you just want to wear it down by attacking with the decimators multiple times. The other thing I want to mention is that decimators also have counter, yep. counter one. So each decimator, if it's getting attacked, potentially gets the counter attack and then it gets the regular attack too. So uh, it looks like maybe only overlapping one. No, it looks like both. Uh, yeah. So I expect, yeah, they'll be over there by the station in range of... The, the, the other thing to do, actually, Christian might actually not want to put them in front of the thing. Why is that? Because the other thing I was thinking is that now Christian... Yeah, see, what Christian actually is doing is he wants to put them such that Philip can't activate them with the Gazanti next turn. Right. So he's putting him further than medium range. And now that actually leaves the Christian's two decimators to uh, bomb the decimator on the front. Avoiding right. the other two squadrons. But in the meantime, this is a side arc attack on uh, Christian's... Yeah. Six damage. Six damage. Now, rolling two double hits is important. Because I think Christian has Brunson. Yeah. Because if he only rolled one double hit, Brunson would cancel the agency yep. trigger. But because he rolled two. Yeah, and, and just like Christian, he's just going to do an engine tech and he's going to ram. So they both take one damage each. So now we're off to the squadron phase. Um, we'll see if Christian does what I... Th yeah, if Christian does what I think he's going to do. As suspected, Christian's decimators are going to ignore Philip's fighters and are just going to go ahead and bomb the decimator. So the first attack with a generic decimator... Yeah, three blues. <laughs> three blues with a decimator have a, a high variance, but there's times when you just roll like a madman. Yeah. He rolls two hits. Of course, the only green token Philip had left was a redirect token, which he spends to uh, redirect one to the side. And uh, Philip just took one in the back. Now here comes Mordekey. And the major difference between Mordekey and a generic decimator is that Mordekey gets to spend a defense token to re-roll any yep. attack die. And when she activates, she gets to re uh, recover a discarded defense token. Trying to put as much distance between her and the fighters while still being at distance one of the uh, ship. It's two in an accuracy? Yeah, two in an accuracy. It says can't redirect. Uh, that's important because all remember all of Philip's defense tokens right now are red because he spent them earlier. Locks down the redirect. If he wants to burn his brace on a two dice tech, which he does. Yeah, he burns his brace. That's actually <laughs> that's actually very bold. That's a yeah, that's a very aggressive move. Burning your brace on two damage like that. 
So Philip is kind of in the situation now where he's forced to activate his uh, his own demolisher first next turn if he doesn't want to get smeared by. Well, Christian's I don't think demolisher. I don't think it's forced. I think it's yeah. He he wants to get the kill and take a ship off the board before it can activate. The thing Philip has to remember too is that if his uh, if his demolisher dies, he gets tabled. So, oh, that's a really yeah. good point. So it, he. He has two choices, right? He can either try to ensure the demolisher kill by by uh, not running away and yeah. getting two hits, like a double tap, or he can try to yeah try to attack uh, try to attack the demolisher. If he doesn't kill it, attempt to run away. Well, I mean, he only has to do two more damage, right? Yeah. So navigate command on the demolisher, and he's going to do his four dice attack into the side of the demo. Again, gets two double hits. Very important against Brunson. Yeah. I think this is that means a yeah. dead demolisher, right? Brunson's double hit. It's three damage. So even if he braces, he's going to take two plus an APT. So he's going to take three. So he uses his brace and his redirect here. Then he takes a then he takes a face up. If he gets structural, he's dead. It's not. So the yeah the. The critical here was faulty countermeasures, which says you cannot ready your exhausted defense tokens. May not be all that important. I don't think it'll matter. <laughs> because actually, there's four damage now on that demo. All Philip now has to do is ram him. But again, as I mentioned earlier, if he rams him, he stays there. And that Architans could just finish him off. So instead, Philip, instead of moving, he's actually going to take a second shot now with the Demolisher. And uh, front into the rear of Christian's Demolisher. That looks like it's enough. Gets four hits. Phil did lament the fact he didn't get a black double hit, so he right. got an APT. And he, now he realized he shouldn't have shot the rear because Christian had two fresh shields on the, the right side of his ship right. that he had access to. If he instead shot the side that he shot last, he would have enough shields. He would only have one shield in the rear to redirect to, and that would not to kill him. And now Philip is saying, "Well, I could ram you and kill you, but now I'm stuck there, and then I would get tabled." So the question is, can I just run out of the way? Can he? I don't think so. I mean. I, I don't I don't think it, like I think he's got to because yeah well I'll, I'll be honest it's not looking good for for Philip no um, Christians actually yeah Christians Christians made a very good series of plays here where he's kind of set up one of his ships to be a trap for the other right so the previous turn it was the Architans to set up a trap for the Raider. Which then the demol his demolisher came in and killed. Yeah. And now the demolisher was the bait for his demolisher to for the Architons to finish mm -hmm. it off. So he does indeed ram uh, Christian's demo. Yeah. And because he gets to walk it back, he it gets to ignore the rules of uh, overlapping the maneuver tool when he uh, creates his thing. So killing off killing off Christian ship. Now he gets his he actually still gets his engine tech move. I think I think uh, Philip's ship has two hull damage on it, three hull damage on it, something like that. Did it, did it take that much just from the fighters? I expect there's probably just some shield damage on the back. So this is a navigate command by the Architans. He's gonna yeah. spend it. And now we'll see who he's gonna shoot at. So it's going to be a side-to-front shot from the Architans to the Demolisher. Uh, oh, that's decent. That's decent. I do believe Philip still has Brunson, though, this turn. And there is two hull damage on the, the, the demo. There is two. Wow, that was a lot of work from those two fighters. Yeah, so accuracy the brace, but he does have... Yeah. Oh, he doesn't have a brace anymore. Yeah. This is Brunson canceling the the double hit. So he he accuracies the redirect and set. So he took two more hull into the side, which leaves him with one more hull on that. Uh, I I don't know. 
I, I'm not sure if that's Morna or the plane uh, decimator. Mm-hmm. But th- there's definitely going to be one in range. Yeah, Morna keys on the left side. Okay. And then the plane decimator is on the right side. But remember, Philip gets to go first with his squadrons during the squadron phase. Yeah. So you can use them to lock them down. Oh, fair. And uh, I don't believe either decimator has uh, grit. If uh, if Christian can successfully, sorry, if Philip can successfully lock down the the two decimators long enough for maybe the demolisher to finish off the Archons, but in order to do that, the uh, the demo has to get close enough to the Archons, which uh, means that it might die on a counterattack. Needs to find the right ruler to use. Yeah, he called he called the Archons maneuver a selfie stick because <laughs> it's got the two uh, the two ticks at the end. Is that going to be in range of the objective? Oh, no. I think it's just out. It might be. Distance one? It's always yeah. hard to tell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I keep thinking... I keep getting confused distance and range. That, yeah, it's not distance one. So, Philip actually reveals a... <laughs> Scope actually revealed a... Uh, concentrated fire command with the Architons. So, it gets two hits. Into the side. I believe that's a side with no shields. Yeah, it might, can't have yeah. shields. But, but the, the Arkansas does have two redirects, so... I think he has some shields to absorb that attack. But see, the problem is now that... He has to turn away, otherwise he's going to block. Yeah. I think I think no matter what he does, the Gazanti's going to block. Because Gazantis are, are not very maneuverable, as far as flotillas go. Well, he's, he's got to position himself a way that the gladiator can get yep. through him and uh, have room on the other side. Uh, unfortunately, I, do, mm, I think actually, might. yeah, he, yeah, he could get around if he goes. If Philip's uh, ship is speed three, he can go speed three and then straight and then turn around and try to get within sh- short range. Yeah, Philip's asking if they have grit, <laughs> so I think he's gonna do what we uh, we both suspected. All right, so that's Morna Key engaging the generic decimator, and then Valen Rudor is engaging engaging decimator. Uh, yeah. So Philip, uh, he just wanted to he just wanted to move Morna Key so that he was engaged with both decimators. All right, so just getting them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The idea is, the idea is that he wants to he wants to make sure Sienna is engaging both of them, because now both of them are forced to attack Sienna. Scatter. Yep. Scatter. Yep. Yeah. Sienna Re jiggles, <laughs> so that's a scatter, and then a counterattack for one. So seven hull now on that decimator. Of course, I don't think, uh, yeah, I don't think uh, it's all about killing the decimators here. So, one damage. How much health does Sienna Reef have? Sienna Reef has three health. So, uh, is, yeah, this is what I was talking about. Like, you want to get two attacks on Sienna and do anything right. So counterattack by Sienna. Yeah, counterattack by Sienna deals two damage, and then Christian throws away the brace on Mordekai to uh, to brace down to one. As we said earlier, Mordekai when she activates, she gets to recover her discarded brace. All right, on to turn four. I don't think that Architons is uh, is that close I mean, range. He's not even trying to measure, so I'm no. guessing not. It's on Philip to kill that Architons and um, make sure that. Yeah, make sure that that demolisher survives. Now, is it is it still in range two? Of the Architons? Or still, still in medium range, sorry? Of the Architons? Yeah. It uh, looks like it. So activating his demolisher first, uh, Philip, is. That's well, an engineering command is what he revealed. It removes one of the cards with that engineering command. That brings him down to, I believe, three hull damage. Instead of, I think, instead of engaging. 
I mean, that's still his best shot. He's got a good uh, side yeah. arc shot in the back of the Arctons. Actually, I wonder. I wonder if that side arc is in black dice range. He might have black dice. Yeah, I, I think so. That. Actually, he may have a... Oh, yeah, he has red, black. Two hits. Ordnance experts. So he didn't have... Oh, my gosh. Oh, my. So he didn't have side arc. No, he didn't have side arc. But, I mean, with a roll like that, yeah. we need side arcs. So, uh, Christian redirects. He gets a coolant discharge for the APT trigger, which is only one attack each round uh, can attack a ship. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. I know he doesn't have anything in, in multiple arcs, so. Well, he does, actually. He has a rear arc on the demo, and he has a side arc on the Gazanti. But you just can't. I thought it was you couldn't attack the same ship. Or you can't attack more than one ship. Sorry. You're yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. If, yeah, only one of your attacks can attack a ship. Christian with the nudge cannon. Very effective. I, I guess he's trying to check for side into side into side. I guess. Yeah, he's calling. He's asking for a judge. I think Devin Devin's the judge. If he's there. Yeah, if he's there. So the the fact that Christian, uh, the fact that the Christian has done a command, he's checking for firing and all that, and um, yeah. Oh, yeah, the fact that he hasn't uh, picked up the token means that I don't think he's going to. I don't think he's close enough to pick up that token, unfortunately. So Christian says that he has to try for the attack, even though even though uh, Philip has an evade. Yeah, TRC to a double hit. Doesn't he just Brunson and evade? No... He just uh, he just measured to that rock. He's not at distance to oh, the okay. rock, so. But he still had shields anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> Christian's, Christian's like, I wish I had Bosk. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, when he did that turn, no, he's not. See, so yeah. Actually, Christian said that if he did get within distance one, he would have been angled such that he would have flown off the table next turn because Arcatins can't maneuver, unfortunately. So, Gazanti with a swish, swish command. So this is a squadron command by the Gazanti. Uh, yeah. He's going to activate, yeah. So, Vail and Rudor first into, yeah. Vail and Rudor attacking Morna Key with uh, three black dice. Swarm reroll. And now the important thing to remember is that uh, because... And Morna gets to brace that, right? Uh, no, because uh, because Morna Key hasn't activated since she threw away her brace. Oh, okay. So she hasn't got her brace back, yeah. Doesn't she have counter? Yes, but uh, oh. Vail and Rudors <sighs> can attack him with these engaged with someone else. Counts for counterattacks, oh, too. Oh, man. All right. Yeah. Yeah, well, so this counter could be important for getting through. Yeah. Uh, do you not counter on Sienna? No, but but Sienna Re uh, attacked the other one. No, no, uh, but, attacked, no, no. She attacked. Him. Right, right. But Sienna Re his ability obstruction ability also works on counter attacks. Oh. So counter one doesn't work on Sienna Re. <laughs> scatter. Yeah, scatter and then to uh, counter attack. And then Swarm, of course, works on counterattacks for one damage. Wow. I think, actually, Morna Key might be at, like, 3 HP right now. Or 2 HP. That's crazy. Yeah, reroll. <laughs> one hit. So Sienna takes one. She's actually at 1 HP now. And then a counterattack. Yeah, and now you can see how uh, Villain, yeah. Rudor, and Scenery can really lock down. It can be really annoying to kill both of them. But now, I mean, he, like she'll just scatter both next time. Okay, so Christian actually, 
uh, they kind of messed up because Christian thought they were in the squadron phase yeah. when in reality they were activating Gazanti. So he kind of jumped the gun there. I don't think it actually matters all that much because uh, because Christian would have had to activate his two uh, decimators anyway. I, yeah, I have a feeling he he's going to lose both his decimators and that's been pretty much all she wrote. Yeah, this is turn five, five now. Turn five of six. He, I don't, I don't know if he. Mm, yeah, he, I think he will lose both decimators because the the generic decimator doesn't have any um, doesn't have any defense tokens. So yeah, it's going to be a yeah, it's going to be another it's going to be another squadron command with uh, the Gazanti. So he's going to try to finish off Mordecai, and then yeah, she's dead. Because three damage, even with a brace, braces it down to two, and so Mordecai only had two. And again, uh, Mordecai can't counterattack because she was engaged oh, did in Santa Reed. Did he uh, roll in the wrong order? Is Valen not in range of this decimator? No, he he did. He, okay. he activated des he activated Valen first. Well, he can move Mordecai. two. He can move either way. No, he can't because he's he's locked down with. Uh, yeah. No, no. If he wasn't in range, right. I, I think I think it's more for the swarm reroll on uh, Sienna Rin. Yeah. So it looks like he is within range. So that's two band damage to that decimator. Oh. Well, I guess the decimator is heavy. So yeah, what what Philip is doing here is that he moves Sienna to touch the station and heal one damage. Yeah. Again, making her unkillable. Gazanti measuring for anti squad. Uh, isn't she unkillable with a well, scatter? She, she was down to one HP. Sure. So as long as you're right. Now that now that um, now that Christian only had one decimator, right. she was unkillable because uh, the flat couldn't kill her, and decimators uh, only have black dice. So Christian with speed two, wiggling, just trying to trying to maintain as much distance as possible. Yeah, moving just moving on to sex here yeah. and seeing. Uh, Feel like again, it's just gonna rabbit away too. So, in fact, Philip. So Philip is probably gonna do a navigation command. He's going to try to uh, get to the token by. Hey. By turn six, but he's not gonna he's not gonna be able to pick up the token. Why not? Oh, because he won't he won't activate. Yeah, right? this is turn five, right? So yeah. next turn is the last turn he has to pick it up, so yeah. he won't be able to do it. Yeah, he'd have to get in range here. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he's gonna be able to get it. So it's it's going to. Uh, so I think I think it's a pretty safe bet that uh, Philip has won this this game. It's just gonna come down to whether he can uh, increase his MOV by killing the other decimator. Christian choosing not to attack. <laughs> but okay, but then he's like, oh, I got a counter. Yeah, the curse the curse of the uh the curse of the blacks anti squadron dice against scatter aces. It's like Philip Philip pretty much hard countered uh Christian's squads with his two. It's pretty funny. I'm yeah, I'm I'm really surprised. Uh C Christian definitely seemed like he uh he was about to table Philip, but um, yeah, I, the uh, despite despite almost uh, doing a fatal mistake with the squadron placement at the beginning of this game, uh, Christian, sorry, Philip managed to lock down the two decimators long enough to uh, take them out of this game. Uh, so two more hits, and I don't think yeah. I don't think it's, uh, oh, yeah, they'll rear attack. Is it dead? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the Arkans still, Arkans still alive. Oh, sorry, what am I doing? What am I, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, that's right. I was just like, the game's over. He gets yeah, all the I points. Know. He doesn't get all the points, but. I, I I gotta say, uh, Phil, so Philip just started playing Armada. I, I would want to say like two months ago. Uh, it's, it's been longer and, than that now, hasn't it? Has it? I don't, I don't know. He, I mean, people. I, we've, we he was actually featured on one of the um, 
the uh, PTL postseason games. I think he, yeah, I think he was playing his, uh, was playing his Rebel Swarm list. But anyway, since that, since that game, he sold all his X Wing stuff and he's yes. died deep into Armada. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Lord Lord of Britannia was asking what game, what kind of game this is. You want to explain the Task Force format? Oh well, I mean, what kind of game is this? Oh, it's not usually, yeah. So this is the task force format. If you look at the top, so yeah. Right first of, of all, screen, not X Wing. Yeah. It's Armada. Yeah, it's but it's a different Armada. format of Armada. Yeah. So if you look at the top uh, right of the screen, you can see the objective there. This uh, this format was introduced at Worlds earlier this year as a side event. It's uh, designed to be played on a three by three space, and it uses two hundred point fleets. Commanders are optional, and you can have a hundred squadron points worth of squadrons in your list. And the only objective in the game is the objective you see on the list, which is the valuable cargo objective. So, so that's, that's, yeah, that's a win for Philip.